Hi, how are you doing? I'm George, and what I'd like to do in this video is simply go over gastric suctioning as well as the equipment that you'd use specifically for nasal gastric suctioning, and some of it can be used for oral for sure, as well as some of the setup or prep of the patient prior to putting the, the tube in. So why do we do gastric suctioning? Well, gastric suctioning is done to remove any kind of excess of air or fluids or semi-fluids that might be in the patient's stomach that is leading to gastric distension. And gastric distension can be harmful for a lot of physiologic reasons, as well as it can lead to potentially aspiration of gastric contents. So we like to decompress the abdomen, decompress the stomach in order to get rid of all that excessive air pressure, gas pressure that's inside there, as well as any kind of fluids that's contributing to that as well. Patients could have a bowel obstruction or, or something else going on. So we want to get rid of that, that stuff so it doesn't compromise the patient's airway and lead to potentially a, an aspiration pneumonia or something like that. So sometimes we have to put these tubes in through the mouth or through the nose in order to prevent that from happening. So if you do need to do gastric tube insertion on your patient, you're going to need some supplies. Now when we're looking at the supplies that we need, a lot of this is, is self-explanatory for the nature of what you're doing. So some of the things that you're going to need well, first of all, your PPE. So wash your hands and don the appropriate personal protective equipment that you're going to require for the procedure. So follow the protocols in your hospital or wherever you're working and doing the procedure. So start off with washing your hands. Make sure you're using gloves. You don't need to have sterile gloves unless this is done with sterile technique. And typically it's a clean technique procedure. So grab your size of gloves that you need. Grab some masks. You should be wearing a mask when you're doing that to protect yourself from any kind of secretion. You might also need a, a mask with a, a face shield potentially. A gown for yourself as well. Now we look at what we need for the patient. Specifically for the patient, you should be using these uh, blue pads or absorbent pads. Remember, absorbent side up, and this would go on the patient's chest. You can also use this to set up your equipment, but not on the patient's chest. So have a clean area where all the things you're gonna use for your patient would be set up upon. Good idea also to have an emesis basin or a kidney basin this size or, or slightly larger just in case the patient becomes nauseous or starts to gag while you're doing this and they bring up some secretions from their stomach. It's a good idea to have a collection receptacle for that, so that's what this is for. You'll also need a nasal gastric tube. And the nasal gastric tubes are sized to the patient based on the width of the patient's external nair. Because if you're going nasally, you have to insert it through one of the nostrils so you need to size it to that nostril to maximize the diameter but not making it too large, the tube too large so it's going to be uncomfortable for the patient. So grab whatever type of nasogastric tube your region uses or orogastric tube and prep it. And I'll show you how to prep that. Now with respect to the tube itself, just a couple things about it and I'll pull this one out of the, the packaging. This is a sump style, what they call a sump style tube. So it has two lumens to it and it's very difficult to see the lumens. So what we'll do is we'll start at the proximal end, the end that will be closest to you. You'll see that we've got this one lumen right over here that has this white connector to it. This is the connector that attaches to the suction tubing, and it is this channel that removes secretions and gas from your patient's stomach. The blue one is your sump channel, and the sump channel is just simply an air entry point that leads all the way down to the distal end of the tube to prevent any kind of uh, excessive pressure causing the lining of the stomach to be sucked into the eyelets at the distal end. We also have this little thing on here as well. This is called your anti-reflux valve and that's just simply what it is. It prevents any kind of secretions from the stomach from coming out the blue sump channel and spilling onto the patient or going to the environment. And you can kind of see this anti-reflux valve has two colors to it. It's got the white color and the blue color. Blue goes to blue so that it works appropriately. So air can come through this and go down into the, the, uh, to the distal end of the tube, but secretion can't go up through it. So an anti-reflux valve, which comes with most of the kits. So if we look at the tube itself, it does have graduated marks on it that tells you the length that it is inside your patient. At the distal end, it's got the eyelets right over here. Not sure if you can see that okay, but the eyelets are right over there, and that's where the secretions get sucked into from the patient's stomach and get removed by the tube. And it's also got at this distal end right over here, the port for the sump. So for this blue channel right over here, okay? So it's this distal end that we insert through the patient's nose or through their mouth if it's an OG insertion and uh, direct it down the esophagus and into the patient's stomach. 
So here is our NG tube. One last thing about these tubes, they also have on it a radio opaque line. Radio opaque line. And this radio opaque line is simply to be able to, ver to visualize on x-ray where the tube is sitting inside the esophagus and where the final placement of the tube lies within the patient's stomach. So you'll require one of these NG tubes. And this is a dual channel. They also come in single channel. Sharpie marker. We use Sharpie markers, or that's a trade name, or any kind of permanent marker to mark where on the tube after we've sized it for length, where we're supposed to stop when we start inserting the tube. We'll also need some of this lubricating jelly to make the insertion of the tube easier, so we'll need some of this. We'll also use tape, plastic tape. And what we use the plastic tape to, for is to secure the tube to the patient's nose. We'll also use the plastic tape to um, ensure that we uh, mark the tube length appropriately because you can mark the tube length with plastic tape or like I said you can use the sharpie marker. We're also going to use the plastic tape for securing the tube to the patient's gown so that it doesn't move away and, uh, from the patient or come dislodged from the patient. Scissors, you may or may not need scissors. If you can't cut the tape that you're using or the bandage that you're using you might need some scissors, a five-in-one connector, some sort of connector. If you lose the connector or the tube doesn't come with a connector, you'll need something to hook it up to your suction tubing. Or if you're using two lengths of suction tubing, you should have one of these on hand or know where they are. Suction tubing. The suction tubing is used to connect the tube to the suction collection unit. So the gastro tube gets connected to this, which gets connected to your collection unit. And you'll also need a suction regulator. Now these will already be on your station outlet, probably behind the patient's bed or in the trauma area inside your hospital. And the, the uh, suction regulator is connected via tubing to your suction collection unit where all the aspirate gets uh, deposited once it's removed from the patient. Now on these suction regulators, they're going to be slightly different depending on what variety you have. The, what you're looking for is either the regulate or the intermittent. Now there's two ways of using suction when you're gastric suctioning your patient. If you have it on continuous, because the stomach is a confined space, you need to have your suction pressure set to a lower value. So if you have it on continuous, run your suction level right around 30 millimeters of mercury. That's negative pressure. If you have it on intermittent, and an intermittent is chosen by taking this tab here, flicking it to the intermittent tab like so. If you have it on intermittent, then you can go with a higher uh, suction pressure because the intermittent function means it's going to be on for a certain amount of seconds and then it's going to shut off for a certain amount of section, seconds and it's going to turn on again and turn off again. And that's what it means. It's intermittent suction that's applied down to the patient's stomach. So have it set to the intermittent tab and then you can control these suction levels to roughly 50 to 120 millimeters of mercury. Now remember on these regulators, whenever you have the tab sweat set to regulate, that is used to regulate the suction pressure that you want as well as to provide continuous suction. When you flip over to intermittent, the suction level doesn't change. It remains the same, but it's going to function in that intermittent on-off configuration that we've been talking about. Okay, so you're going to need that. Another thing you're going to need to aid in the insertion, cup with water inside of it, as well as a straw. So grab some water from the tap, nice and clean, maybe a little bit cool for uh, comfort for your patient, and have them hold this and part of the insertion is going to involve them taking sips of water from the cup and as they are swipping, sipping and swallowing you'll cautiously advance the tube every time they swallow and that will help to advance it into the esophagus as well as into the patient's stomach. A couple other things left 60 cc syringe like this one right over here you'll need the syringe to put air into the patient's sump to, to um, prevent it from the sump or the tube from sticking to the lining of the patient's stomach as well as to aspirate any content. So, plus it's used for confirming placement once you've got the tube inside the patient's stomach. And last but not least, also what is used for confirming placement is your stethoscope. So even though you're not putting this into the, the uh, tube into the patient's lungs, you're still going to need con to confirm placement with your stethoscope. Okay? That's all the equipment that you pretty much need for an NG OG insertion. Now what we need to do is prep the patient. So with regards to the patient of course make sure you've explained the procedure to the patient so they have an idea of what to expect and also make sure they're sitting upright at least at a 30 degree angle or even higher. 
and that just helps us when we're inserting the tube, makes it more comfortable. Plus, if the patient has to, to vomit, then they can bring the aspirate out of their, their stomach up easier and, and you know, go in, aspirate, not aspirate, but uh, deposit into the kidney basin. So make sure your patient's in that position right over there. Then what you'd want to do is make sure you've got a blue pad on their chest. So take the blue pad, put it on the patient's chest, like so with the absorbent side up. And what you need to do at this point in time then is get the water inside your cup, make sure it's ready to go for your patient. Hook up your suction, make sure the suction's set to the appropriate levels, and size the tube. Now when it comes to the sizing of the tube, it's fairly easy and straightforward to size. What you'll end up doing is taking the distal tip of the catheter or the suction, suction tube and placing it on the tip of their nose, then run it to the earlobe of the patient and then follow it down to the xiphoid process. Once you've got the indicated mark of the xiphoid process with your fingers, it's at that point in time you can use your tape to wrap around the NG tube to indicate or to let you know that that's as far as you insert the tube into the patient. You can also use your, non -per your permanent non-erase marker to indicate how far to go into the tube. And remember, the tube has distant markers, so you can make those distant markers more appropriate or easy to see by using the Sharpie marker or the tape to indicate distance. So remember, you've got to size it for distance, but you also have to size it to the narrow. So take a look at your patient, and when you're looking at your patient, look inside their nose via the nostrils. Take a good look inside there and what you're looking for is any kind of polyp or deviation that might make one nostril or nasal passage over the other side less conducive for success of the insertion. So what you want to have is the biggest, widest tract possible into the nasal passage so it eases the insertion of this tube from the nasal passage or nasal cavity into the nasal pharynx, down the oropharynx, etc. So also look for deviated septum too. So you want to make sure that you've got the biggest passage possible and that it's not compromised by polyps or deviated septum or any kind of swelling or something like that. Could, that could make this a little bit more difficult. So inspect the nostril. Look for the size of tube that's best for that size of uh, nostril as well as nasal passage and then size it for length. So if we were going to size this particular tube for length on this patient right over here, you can kind of feel where the xiphoid process is under the gown. It's right over here. So I'll just simply take the tube, remember I'd have gloves on when I was doing this, and simply go from the distal tip of the tube, from the tip of the nose to the earlobe, and then down to the patient's xiphoid process. So looking at this, it's roughly 57 centimeters that's required for this particular patient. I make my mark at the 57 centimeter distance marking on my NG tube with the Sharpie marker or the tape. Now I've got my distance established, I know how far to insert this. At this point in time, what I then do is lubricate my tube. So take your, lubricant, your lubricating jelly, just simply tear off the end of it, grab the distal end of your tube, and place the distal end of that tube into the lubricant. And that should be enough lube. You don't have to lubricate the entire distal end of this tube, because all that's going to do is make it harder for you to insert the tube into your patient because now it's all lubricated up and you're going to get all that lubricated uh, lubricant on your, on your hands. It'll be hard to control the tube. Once you've got that all ready, you're good to go. Get the patient to hold the glass of water and start inserting the tube through the nares. That pretty much ends this portion of the video uh, with regards to nasal gastric suctioning. What we're going to do in the next video is I'm going to demonstrate how to put the nasal gastric tube into the patient uh, and in, uh, into the patient via the external nair, nasal passage down to the esophagus and, and into the stomach. So put all those pieces of the puzzle together as well as the insertion and stabilization of the tube. In other words, how to tape it in place to the nose and how to tape it in place to the patient's gown or pajamas or whatever they, they have on. If you like this video, hit like. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. But also please, I accept your suggestions in terms of how to make the videos better, as well as suggestions for future videos as well. So I hope you have a good day. Hope you like the video. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. Till next time, this is George signing off. Once I find the remote. Ah, here it is, under the gloves. Take care, have a great day.